Equinox people, this is Sam from Team Sam Rex one here. And since the release of the March 31st, 2017 ban list, I've been getting a ton of requests on a lot of different types of deck profiles. And one of the most highly requested deck profile up to date was my Dark Lord deck for the new upcoming format. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. The reason why I didn't want to post the deck profile as quickly as I can, because I was waiting for Duelist Saga to be released. There's some amazing cards that help support Dark Lords, such as Dark Lord Ukubak. And there's also some amazing side deck cards as well that you guys can utilize in your side deck that can really help with Dark Lords against the current meta. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. As I progress the deck profile, I'll explain to you guys all my card choices and the reason why I play them. So for those of you who are here to listen to my explanations, thank you guys so much for coming here. I really appreciate all your support. And if you guys have smashed that 500 plus like button, we'll be getting more amazing upcoming format deck profiles. So make sure you guys smash that thumbs up button right now. Go down there and smash that thumbs up button. So for the monster real quick is you want to play triple Dark Lord Ixho. Okay, you guys know what Ixho does. This card is very, very self-explanatory. This card is your trading of the deck. You know, discard any Dark Lord card with itself to draw two cards. Essentially, the best monster in the deck is a triple Dark Lord Superbia. This card is your monster reborn. This card is special summon from the graveyard. You can target one fairy type monster in your graveyard, except for Dark Lord Superbia and special summon that target. She's really good because she's able to help span the board with Dark Lord monsters and especially Dark Lords have a lot of synergy on the field um, because they're able to pay a thousand life points during the player's turn to utilize uh, their uh, spawn trap cards in the grave to shovel them back to the deck and they'll basically gain that effect and also commonly off with Dark Lord Zorado which you play one copy of uh, you know a Dark Lord uh, Superbia can revive back Zorado and you can make uh, rank 8 plays from there which is really really powerful in today's metagame so your other Dark Lord monsters Triple Dark Lord Nastin in the previous deck profile that I did before for the channel I did only play two copies of Nastin but I realized how important Nastin is to have him in your hand be able to ditch your trap cards to the graveyard be able to ditch your spawn cards to the graveyard to basically bring out a 2600 body is just very very uh, essential in the Dark Lord deck, so definitely Triple Nastin is really amazing. At least you want to play uh, the last Dark Lord monster, Dark Lord uh, Tezcatlo Lopoca. The reason why you play uh, Tezcatlo Lopoca is because, okay, I, I know that sounds like a tongue twister. Anyways, guys, excuse me for that. Uh, this card is really important because it protects you from Dark Hole. You know, with Zodiac still running around, a lot of people are still going to be maining deck cards like Dark Lords, not Dark Lords, Dark Hole. You know, Regeki and things like that. So to get, uh, you know, so Tezcatlo Lopoca, uh, what he basically does is that he acts as like a, you know, a gun. What, uh, so if a Dark Lord monster you control will be destroyed by battle by card effect, you can discard this card uh, from your hand instead. So he basically protects all your Dark Lord monsters, which I found really essential to play in, in today's modern format. So definitely one Dark Lord, Tezcatlopoca, and that's the only reason why you play him. And he's really good because what you can do is that once you already have banishment, uh, banishment in the grave, what you can do at this point is that you can activate Banishment. If you already have a full, a full board of Dark Lord monsters and you're afraid of cards of Dark Lord Regeki, what you can do is that you can activate one of your Dark Lord monsters effect, shuffle back Banishment, search uh, Tezcatlopoca, Lopica, and then you're pretty much lit. Your opponent would activate cards like Dark Hole or Yankee. So the, uh, this card is just a really, really good vers versatile hand trap. Two more new Dark Lord monsters that you guys want to play in the deck is definitely Dark Lord Ukubak. This card is the new card that has just been released in Duelist Saga. What Ukubak does is that he fixes all the problems that the deck had before. Ukubak is the only normal summon in the deck, okay? this is He's, he's only normal summon uh, Dark Lord monster that you play in the deck and he's really good because one, he's level 3 which comes gives you access to rank 3 plays with the Speed Speedroid Teratop engine and and also, he fixes all the problems, and what I mean by that is that let's say that you you have like Ukubak and Superbia uh, in the grave, and you have like you know a contract in hand. You can summon Ukubak, set Ixho to the grave, okay? Uh, dump Ixho to the grave, activate contract, special summon Superbia, and then Superbia will, will activate the effect to target the Dark Lord monster and special summon, not Dark Lord, a fairy monster and special summon it. So Ukubak basically feeds your graveyard for all purpose access of uh, the Dark Lord monster that you have on the field. So let's say that you need a searcher, okay, and you have a searcher in hand. And you, and you have a Dark Lord monster in the field, you can normal summon Ukubak, dump Banishment, activate the Dark Lord monster, uh, return Banishment to the deck, add a Dark Lord monster, vice versa for a contract. If you need a monster reborn, what you can do is that you can normal summon Ukubak, dump Contract, okay? And then activate one of your Dark Lord monsters in the field, shovel back Contract, special summon a monster from the grave. Like you guys all know, like the, this card has a lot of, a lot of versatility and, and utility in the deck. And it's one of the cards that Dark Lords was missing all that time. So definitely uh, double Dark Lord Ukubak would definitely work in the deck in my personal opinion. So double copies of uh, him. Let's go off to your supporting engine. Double Arc Lord Christia and double Vanity's Fiend. These cards are your lockdown aspect of the deck. And that's why I love Dark Lords so much because you're able to just spam a lot of monsters on the board without having to normal summon at all. And you have Vanity's Fiend in 
hand, you basically just tribute one of those monsters on Vanity's Fiend, and then like you're just basically telling your opponent, okay, it's game. Even if you don't have Dark Hole, it's game. Like Vanity's Fiend is just a really, really powerful card in today's format. Uh, so definitely double Vanity's Fiend and, and Arc Lord Christia. Christia is really good because it's level eight, which synergizes really well with Trade In, and also Christia can be revived back with Superbia, which is really, really amazing. And of course, this card gives you hand control as well. Four exactly four Fairy in the Grave, you can special summon Christia, and then add back a card like Ixchel to your hand, and the next turn you can utilize Ixchel to basically help you draw into more cards. So, uh, double Christia and double Vanity's Fiend is definitely a must off in my personal opinion. And Vanity's Fiend is also a dark as well, uh, which gives you access uh, into a, a lure. He's a, he, he's a lure target, which is really nice. Next off for Speed War Teratop Engine, I feel like this engine is just very, very powerful right now. And since it's, uh, you know, Teratop Star 3, might as well utilize this engine the best. This engine is just very, very viable in, uh, in the deck, in my personal opinion, because it's a free special summon. You can tribute the Speed War Teratops for Vanity's Fiend or Christia to lock down your opponent and give you access to cards like Dante, Totem Bird, Break Sword. It's just very powerful, especially Dante, where he's able to just mill your Dark Lord spell and trap cards or even Dark Lord monsters to be right. So that way that you have easier access to contract in your hand. So Speed War Teratop is a really good card. One is really good for use for his tribute fodder, and two, it uh, helps you make Dante at any rank three that you know, depending on the situation that you're in. And if you make Dante, Dante is able to help you feed the graveyard with three more cards, hopefully seeing a Dark Lord spell or trap card in there with a Dark Lord monster. So Speed War Teratop is just really, really amazing. Uh, the spell squall for draw power first, triple lower darkness. You guys don't know what Lord does. Triple trade in trading is just really amazing. You guys play a lot of level eights in the deck, you know, Superbia, you know, you know, Zerato, Christia. Trading is just really, really amazing, and you have a, you, you have a lot of access to trading because Banishment can search the Superbia, which is really good. Let's go up to the Dark Lord cards, the triple Dark Lord contact. Uh, contact is really good because it is the monster born of the deck, and that's when trading comes in hand because you're able to trade in for the Christia, draw two cards, activate Dark Lord contact, special summon Superbia, and then activate Superbia, special summon Christia, and then you basically have the lock, which is really, really good. Of course, triple banishment of the Dark Lord is really amazing as well. This card is your searcher, searches out all your Dark Lord cards from your deck to your hand. This deck has double searches in one turn and double special summon in one turn because if the monster's on the field and you have these two cards in the graveyard, let's say you have two Dark Lord monsters on the field, you're gonna activate each of Dark Lord's effect to shuffle this back and shuffle this back to basically gain their effects, which is really really powerful and last but not least you want to play of course the one skill charge uh in the deck skill charge is just so good especially in in dark lord you're able to just spam the board help make rank eight plays rank 10 plays just really really good card overall and let's go off to our staples real quick you want to play double twin twister for the format because paleo is one of the best decks of in today's meta so a twin twister just help, basically helps you get rid of the problematic back rows and also ditching cards like christian to graveyard so that way that call of the will be will be able to trigger it's just pretty good and last but not least uh, one regeki since zodiacs are still going to be running around regeki is still powerful card in today's meta be able to get rid of the whole entire board and potentially just OTK your opponent is just really strong right, guys so traps we're gonna play double dark lord rebellion and one dark lord enchantment uh to be honest guys uh i'm debating whether i have to cut out enchantment to play triple dark lord rebellion the reason why rebellion is just so good in the deck is because you want to see this card in your graveyard as quickly as possible dark lord rebellion is just a really good card overall it's untargetable pop which is really amazing enchantment is really good as well it's able to help you OTK your opponent because you can attack into their monsters activate dark lord enchantment from the grave take control of your opponent's last monster and just basically swing for game which is really good or you can activate dark lord enchantment take control of one of your opponent's monster this card is not target by the way and then you tribute the monster off of vanity's fiend which is really good so that's why i still like playing uh, the one dark lord enchantment but it sometimes felt like uh you know rebellion is just a overall way better card in today's format uh so definitely guys uh, I, I might consider cutting out the enchantment for the third rebellion But I said before guys if you guys have your own ratios or anything that you guys want to play in your own deck Make sure you guys play it because this deck list is what works well the most for me uh, So if you guys have your own ratios and different texts and things like that Make sure you guys use my deck list as a guide to what you guys can play last but not least I felt like this card like I would never can cut this card double call the haunted this card is bay so so good able to apply a lot of pressure on board call a haunted and face superbia christia or on standby face that your opponent tries to special summon activate call the haunted call the haunted back superbia christia it's just so so good like this card is able to help you pressure your opponent a lot because of superbia superbia is a huge beater 2800 uh beater which is really really strong and then you know with special summoning superbia no sorry 2900 beater special summoning superbia and you're able to bring back another dark lord monster and attack when it's just swing can just potentially game your opponent so the call of haunted is just a really good Card of all, and this deck is a 42 card main deck. Uh, I was thinking whether or not to cut out the enchantment, and that's pretty much all the changes that I definitely would have had uh, in the main deck so far. But 42 has been working fine for me. Uh, let's go out to our side deck, double chalice, uh, really good going second against uh, what is it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? Zodiacs. Double Denko Sega, Triple and Paranoia Wall. Oh my god, this Infernoids, Wreck Infernoids. Denko Sega is really good against Paleo. Uh, double DD Crow, really amazing. A uh, double Dark Hole. Uh, the last twin twister and last but not least guys last but not least 
the new card in uh, Duelist Saga, Triple Legacy of the Duelist. I feel like decks like Mermails, Dark Lords, and all those decks can utilize this card the most because we don't set any back row. The only back row that you're probably going to be setting is called a Haunted. So ba what basically this card says is that when your opponent monster, when your monster declares an attack, you can target one spell card, your opponent control, negate the attack, and if you do, destroy that card. So this card is, is an MST within itself. Uh, negate, uh, what's it called? Each player can only set one spell and trap card from their hand, so per turn. So basically, if you're going first and you open up this card with a full board against Paleo and they only have five back row in hand, activate Legacy of the Duelist, they can only set one back row and you pretty much just win the game from there like you know this card is just so good and then uh what is it called monsters cannot special uh, cannot monsters cannot attack the turn they were special from the extra deck card is also a really good card as well because uh you rarely go into the extra deck the extra deck is just another alternative win condition that you have in dark lords uh most of the time you're just gonna beat down your opponent which is big dark lord monster anyways during your draw phase before you draw you can give up your normal draw this turn and if you do add a monster from a graveyard to your hand so uh this card is really good if you need a dark lord monster like an extra in your hand while you already have dark lord's monster in hand you can just give up your normal draw phase activate legacy of the duelist add back the show and then activate it show to draw two more cards it's just really really amazing so legacy of the duelist just wrecks paleo overall and I recommend you guys just definitely picking it up. Let's go out to your extra deck real quick. Extra deck, you're gonna play a one number 22 Zombie Stein. Zombie Stein is really good for a 4500 beater, which is all which also negates, which is really amazing. And it's also a dart. Uh, one Divine Dragon Knight, Falgrand. This card is really good because you're able to make Falgrand special summon Christia attack, attack during your turn. You can negate your own Christia and proceed into special summoning, which is really amazing. One I'll say, um. For the level eights, uh, the the you know the Titanic, uh, the Galaxy Engine, the Galaxy Package, really really good. Uh, one big guy, the only level seven that I play. As big guy, it does actually come up because you do play Triple Nastin, which is really good. Take control your opponent's monster and just basically game them. One number thirty five. And this card right here is the Pain Gainer. Uh, I unfortunately do not have Pain Gainer. This is number 84 Pain Gainer. Definitely want to, want to play a 35 in the Pain Gainer, my personal opinion. And I'm sorry that I, I have to proxy this card. So, of course, Spider and the Pain Gainer. Uh, last one, at least for the 10s, uh, you know, a Real Cannon Super Dora. And, of course, uh, one, uh, what is it called? Uh, Super Dreadnought Real Cannon Gustav Max. Last but not least, want to play one Dante, one the Phantom Knight of Break Sword. And of course, uh, the one totem bird. If you can make totem birds first turn with a full board of monsters that you already have, you basically are, you know, are pretty much Gucci against Dark Hole, Dark, Dark Hole and Rejecti. So that's pretty much it for this deck profile, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this deck profile, make sure you guys smash that final plus like button. That would be absolutely amazing, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, stay tuned for more amazing deck profiles for the upcoming format. This is Sam from Team Sarah Sam signing out. All right, guys. Peace.